Breaking news, guys, and I wonder why other channels are not talking more about this. Potential strikes at the docks, a very serious salmon shortage, and the Chinese-Taiwan blockade that could start World War III. Here, check this out. Chinese video shows the extent of the exercises, both human and hardware, including for the first time an aircraft carrier, the Shandong, as well as nuclear-capable bombers. Today's live fire drills rehearsed a blockade of Taiwan. And as this Chinese animation shows, strikes against specific targets on the island. In Beijing, the foreign ministry spokesman said the exercises were a serious warning to Taiwan's separatists and what he called external forces, that is, the U.S. and its allies. <laughs> Specifically, their retaliation for the meeting in L.A. between President Tsai Ing-wen, who insists Taiwan will remain independent, and Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who signaled the U.S. would help protect it from China. We will honor our obligations and reiterate our commitment to our shared values behind which all Americans are united. Tensions between China and Taiwan have been reaching a boiling point. China has been carrying out military drills around Taiwan, and there are fears that they may actually try to blockade the island. That would mean that the United States could be forced to make the first move and potentially lead the whole world to a much larger conflict. And as for what's happening right here at home, there are talks going on between dock workers on the U.S. West Coast and their employers, but it seems like they're not getting anywhere. And so this crisis could lead to a major supply chain crisis, and it is estimated that a strike could cost the U.S. economy $500 million a day. It's a half a billion dollars, guys, and this is a huge deal. And did I mention that this could happen any moment now? And in other news, the global supply of farmed Atlantic salmon is projected to remain flat in 2023, even as demand is projected to increase. So we all know where this is heading, right? So the U.S. has spent over $2 billion on a plan to save salmon, but the fish are vanishing anyway. The U.S. government promised native tribes in the Pacific Northwest that they would keep fishing as they've always done. But instead of preserving wild salmon, it's actually propping up a failing system of hatcheries. Now that the system is falling apart, what do you guys think? Is our government making a mess of things again? Just drop me a quick comment, yes or no, on this one. What I'd like to know is, how is everybody surviving right now? Like, especially with people on unemployment and young ones without health insurance, living with and off of their parents. I mean, we have such a mess on our hands right now. I'm really hoping that we do not see some mass crime wave as more and more people realize that they cannot afford the food products that they want or can't even afford them any longer. Now, Amazon and Walmart prices have gone up yet again. <laughs> I'm not making this up, guys. It is near impossible to eat fast food because of all the stores that are so expensive expensive now. I mean, I'm not paying $15 for a burger and fries and tea. Two people eating at Popeye's is $30. Have you guys noticed this? A can of Campbell's tomato soup used to be like 50 cents at Walmart. Now it's $1.25. So how are poor people getting by? And what about the people who had their food stamps cup, SNAP and EBT? I mean, like, what are they doing? What are they eating now? How are they able to get through each and every single day? Every day, I'm just praying for all of us to get through this mess. But how about you guys? Also, for the very best way to invest in gold or silver, be sure to hit the link in the description down below. Protect yourselves, folks. All right. So first off, let's talk about this West Coast port strike that could cost the U.S. economy a whopping $500 million a day. All right. So basically, we've got a pretty bad situation going on with the West Coast docks. Now, shipping analyst Lars Jensen compared it to a slow motion train wreck. It's got a lot of people worried about another supply chain disaster. Since the old contract ran out back in 2022, there's been a constant risk risk of labor disruptions and as we saw back in 2014 2015 time frame things can get pretty chaotic pretty quickly now apparently there are accusations flying around that workers are slowing down which caused some terminals to completely close last week but things have been going back to normal for now even though the national retail federation is calling on the white house to get involved and to resolve the labor negotiations asap and if the biggest port in the country has to shut down because of a labor disruption this could seriously mess up the whole economy now According to a report from the National Association of Manufacturers, we could very well be looking at a $500 million hit per day and the loss of 41,000 jobs if the strikes last for two weeks. Now, the recent shutdown lasted 24 hours, but things are back online at the moment. But even though they're open again, there still hasn't been any progress made in the contract negotiations between the International Longshore and Warehouse Union and the Pacific Maritime Organization. And it looks like the flow of cargo out of the biggest U.S. port complex is still going to be messed up for a while. And so basically what happened was that not enough dock workers showed up for work. So everything just kind of came to a grinding halt. At Long Beach, 
Four out of six containers, terminals, they were closed, and at LA, all seven box facilities were shut down. The PMA thinks that the union was deliberately withholding labor to shut everything down, but the union says that's not true, and that they were just having a monthly meeting and observing the Good Friday holiday. People are getting more and more worried about what will happen if the talks between the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, the ILWU, and the Pacific Maritime Organization, PMA don't go well. So the PMA, they keep warning that the West Coast could lose business if there's no agreement soon. So the U.S. National Retail Federation, the NRF, is asking the government to step in and sort everything out fast. Then, of course, there's the salmon shortage. Yeah, I know. Not everybody's really a big fan of salmon. And some people say salmon. I say salmon because there's an L in it. Other people are like, well, the L is silent. My thing is always kind of like, okay, do you say salamander or do you say salamander, right? You still use the L, right? Anyway, I digress. But anyway, so like I said, you know, everybody's not a real big fan of salmon, but I think it definitely points to a bigger problem that we have right here in the United States, which is a general food shortage and overall high prices on everything problem. And sure, we don't mind the salmon shortage right now. You could eat something else. But what happens when people that used to buy salmon go for other more affordable foods? That is when the demand curve skews up and kind of pushes up prices for supposedly affordable options as they go up as well. It's just basic supply and demand. And so look at this, guys. So the latest projections from Katali, a marketing data firm, they're saying that the amount of farmed Atlantic salmon available nationwide or worldwide, I should say, won't be changing much in 2023, even though there is expected to be much more demand for it. And we've seen this pattern before. This means that we might very well have a salmon shortage on our hands if demand keeps going up, but the supply stays the same. The Kantali expert thinks that the demand could go up by 6 to 8%. Not a good look, my friend. Our government tried doing something about it, but they inevitably failed. Kind of like they usually do. Like it says here, the United States has spent more than $2 billion on a plan to save salmon. The fish are vanishing away. The U.S. government promised native tribes in the Pacific Northwest that they could keep fishing as they've always done. But instead of preserving wild salmon, it propped up a failing system of hatcheries. Now that system is falling apart. There are like so many hatcheries in the Northwest run by the government and tribes, and they employ thousands of people. They even have gift shops and visitor centers so you can visit and learn about the fish. These hatcheries send Chinook salmon to the Pacific Ocean so you can still enjoy wild caught salmon at your local restaurant or your grocery store even though they're endangered. But these hatcheries were supposed to stop the decline of salmon and they haven't. The numbers of each of the six salmon species native to the Colombian basin has dropped to just a fraction of what it used to be. 13 distinct populations are now considered threatened or endangered. So every year, almost 250 million young salmon go to the ocean, mostly from the hatcheries, which is like three times as many as before any dams were built. Nowadays, less than one fifth of these fish make it back home to provide provide food and income for the fishermen, or even give birth to new salmon babies. In recent years, salmon survival rates have dropped to some of the worst on record. There are so few adult salmon coming back that dozens of hatcheries are struggling just to collect enough fish for breeding, which could mean trouble for future fishing seasons. Now just imagine all of that, but about a hundred times worse, thanks to the Taiwan blockade. So here's the story. They're calling it a ring of steel. Experts are warning that if China attempts to blockade Taiwan, it could lead to a war with the United States. Now, the United States has pledged to defend Taiwan, and as China continues to tighten its grip, the possibility of nuclear conflict grows. Now, Beijing recently carried out drills around Taiwan, and while it may be difficult to cross the 100-mile Taiwan Strait and achieve surprise, Many observers believe that China will try to subdue the island with a blockade instead. Defense expert Robert Clark has said that a blockade is Beijing's main recourse for punitive action against Taiwan. However, a blockade could also restrict the U.S. military activity and also result in Taipei's political capitalization of Beijing due to economic consequences. Now, each time China tightens its blockade around Taiwan, the chances of war increase, and also the risks of military miscalculation goes up. It would be immensely difficult for the United States to intervene directly without provoking war. So they might resort to heavy sanctions to break the blockade. Even then, organizing a mission could ultimately take weeks, which could then give Beijing enough time to isolate Taiwan and bring it to surrender before the U.S. can even intervene. I'm telling you guys, it is time to stock up on the essentials. I bought 20 dish towels from the Dollar Tree. I also bought 20 cotton bandanas as well. These are the new napkins of the future. Better pick up some cheap white washcloths while you're out shopping. 
You'll know what to do with them. Bye-bye paper products in the near future. No trees, no cotton, no paper. There's also a vinegar shortage, which we also talked about before. Have you guys noticed that? Some of your comments said that it's because aside from being a solid cooking ingredient, vinegar is also very good for cleaning. That's probably why people are stocking up on it. Anyway, what about you guys? What have you been stocking up on lately? Let me know in the comments down below so that we can all compare notes. Yeah, let's help each other out here on the channel. Oh, and do not forget to hit the subscribe button and also make sure that notification bell is turned on. You do not want to miss out on the future developments on any of these stories, am I right? Definitely a lot to unpack in today's shortage update and daily news report. Salmon running out, a potential port strike that could cost Americans tens of millions of dollars, if not up to $500 million a day, and the Chinese-Taiwan blockade that could spark World War III up here. Appreciate you guys tuning in, and for the best way to invest in gold or silver, hit the link in the description down below. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you guys on the next one.